Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and look who's still around. I haven't left yet. Um, today we're going to be uh, making a tiger, and I'm going to be showing you the full process for this. Um, the first step, as always, is to sculpt the head and feet. Now the clay you see me using is different than what you normally see me using. Um, this is monster clay, and I the reason I'm using this is because I'm going to making a mold and cast of the sculpture. And what that basically means is I'm going to pour silicone over this to make a negative, and then I'm going to pour resin into that negative to make a positive. Basically, I'm going to be making multiple copies of this tiger sculpture um, for future projects. So I've already done it twice. The first one was a tiger, and then I made a celestial version, which I'll pop here. Um, but I don't recommend this unless you're going to use it for mold making. Like it never hardens um, and it can soften on its own. So I don't recommend it for just normal sculpture making. What I recommend is Super Sculpey, Sculpey Original, Sculpey Fimo, I mean Primo. Fimo is its own brand, but you could use that one too. Um, any polymer clay is perfect for one-off um, sculptures. But what I'm doing is a take, okay, so actually let me restart that. What you should start doing is take a lump of tin foil and squish it into the rough head shape that you're going for. I'm gonna have to reword all of this because I'm not using the clay that I should be using to show you guys properly. <laughs> but yes, what you normally want to do is squish a, tin foil in the rough head shape you're going for and then put a layer of clay over this so that way your clay will bake more evenly in the oven and it won't be as heavy because you have the foil taking up most of the shape and the clay is just mostly for adding the details and such and so it'll be a lot lighter on you and less likely to fall over but after that it's the same process I start um, with where I want the eyes to be and then I'll start adding um, you know where my muzzles at where my ears are gonna go and just slowly building up all the proportions that I want this is the most important step to where you want to use references I can never stress this enough because I'm not good at sculpting cats I still think I have a little bit of work to do on this one but um, cats have something that's always been really hard for me and so oh I was using references that just I was drowning in references I had one from top angles bottom angles one looking at me one looking away from me like I was using all the different references that I could find of a tiger's face um, you really want to make sure whatever you're sculpting you have references because that's gonna really set the bar for you of how detailed you want to go it's gonna make it a lot easier to see oh well this should be looking this way not the way i would normally sculpt it because i'm looking at a reference and i can see what the actual animal or person or whatever you're sculpting looks like so references references also i learned a trick to make sure that your sculpture is going the right direction and nothing looks too wonky because when you're naturally looking at it you know you can't really see um, any mistakes you have so if you turn it upside down and look at it um, that's when you can notice like a really um, key flaws like for instance I found out that my eyes were like really wonky when I turned it upside down so I fixed that um, also the cheek was like more puffier on one side and it wasn't as puffy on the other so um, just making sure that you're looking at references from all angles and you're looking at your sculpture from all angles and look at everything from all angles until it's how you like it
But after all the sculpting is done and I've casted and molded everything and if you guys really want to see all that process, it's available on my Patreon, but I don't dub that beginner friendly, so I'm not showing it here. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys are like really interested and really want to check it out. But um, after all that's done, it's normal process. It's time to build up the body. And the way I do that is I take sheets of quilt batting and you can get this from a lot of craft stores. You can even get it from Walmart, which is where I usually buy mine because it's cheaper. Um, I take long sheets and I'll cut it into strips and then just wrap it around the body over and over and over until it's built up to how I want. Now, you want to be mindful that you only want to build it up just a little bit thinner than how you actually want the final body to look because your fur fabric or whatever fabric you're going to use is going to add a little bit of girth to it and it's going to make it a little bit thicker. So, um, like say if you've built up the quilt batting exactly how you wanted it, the body's perfect, but then when you add the fur fabric, it's gonna be too thick or too chunky in spots and you won't like it anymore. So just make sure you're building up the quilt batting a little thinner than what you actually want because your fabric is going to add that extra bit of girth and it's gonna make the body look exactly how you want. First sewing and and my uh, pattern making <coughs> um, what I do is I cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the sculpture and then I'll make slits um, as close to the body where the legs are and I'll slide those through and then I'll um, wrap the fabric around the body and trim it down so that it's nice and tight around the body but not too tight I just want it tight enough to where I have to put a little pressure to make the two ends of the fabric meet. Um, that way I know um, it's going to be tight against the body and it's not going to be loose or look too chunky or anything like that. And then I'll just sew straight down the middle with a basic stitch. Um, I think I'm using black thread for this. You, you, you really should probably be using a white thread or some other kind of thread but because I was airbrushing and because of the way I sew the thread doesn't show itself much I wasn't really worried about that but if you're worried about that you can go ahead and get a thread the color of your fabric so that way you know that it will never show for you. The legs are a similar step. I'll just cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the leg, trim it down so it uh, wraps around the leg nice and tightly, but not too tightly. And then I'll sew from the feet going up towards the body 
and then to join the body fabric and the leg fabric I'll use a ladder stitch. After that, the next step is tripping. Now, I use a pet shaver for this step. Um, it just gets the fur off super quickly, a lot more smoother than I could ever do with just scissors. And it comes in a lot of different guard sizes, so I can pick the fur length that I'm going for. Um, and I'll use multiple different um, ones on one doll, just so like if I want the fur to be thicker in one spot or thinner in another it really helps to make that process a lot easier on me um but i'll still regardless go back in with scissors especially around the legs just to make sure the um joints really pop out and are prominent um but yeah i really recommend a shaver guys if you're going to be making a lot of these um it just cuts the time in half and it makes it look a lot more professional and representable when it's not chopped to hell <laughs> with scissors. I mean, if you're careful enough, you can do scissors too, but I've never had luck with it. I'm just, I'm just bad at that. So I always just recommend using a pet shaver. Once it's all trimmed down, it's time to airbrush. And I use, and it's a mouthful, I use a dual action siphon feed airbrush which basically just means I use an airbrush that has a paint pot on the bottom that you plug into it. Um, now, you can use a gravity feed airbrush, which is the airbrush that has um, a pot on top and you pour paint into it from the top, but any airbrush you want to use is perfectly fine for this type of craft because we don't need anything um, like super fine or super serious in price range or anything because we're just um, spraying fur colors uh, that's pretty much all we're doing so you can get a cheap one you can get an expensive one whatever's in your budget they'll all work just fine for this type of um, thing that we're doing here and as long as you are not spraying too closely to the fur and you're not spraying a ton of layers and you're always brushing out your piece between layers your fur is not going to get crunchy or or stiff or anything like that you just got to make sure you're keeping mindful of it and um, lighter colors always um, are a lot easier on the faux fur it's when darker colors like dark blues and, and greens or blacks e blacks are the worst but it's when you get to colors like that you want to be very mindful of what you're doing to make sure that your fur doesn't get crunchy and it's time for the most stress inducing part and I'm so sorry that the angles aren't the best, but I was so terrified I was going to mess this up that I, I was in full focus mode. I was not worrying about the camera whatsoever, but um, I was getting really close to the body and I was putting just enough air into the airbrush that it would barely come out to get these really small lines. And it was just, oh, I was so scared. I was looking up I, so many pictures of tigers and I was just so scared that I was gonna mess it up. but. Um, even when I tried to like pay attention to the camera and fix the angles, now you just see my hair all in the way. So sorry, but I was panicking and making sure I was doing it all right. So just make sure you're taking your time like I'm trying to and everything will turn out fine. It, it's, it's all good. You can totally see me taking pictures and sending it to my friends like, does this look okay? Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so you don't always have to know what's going on or know all the details of what you're doing. Sometimes you just gotta go for it and have faith that it'll turn out all right. And and it did, you know, I, I really like the way it turned out. I really like the way the stripes looked. So I was just being really hard on myself and freaking out about it. Just take it nice and slow and you guys got it, man.
again, sorry for the angles, but I was also so terrified I was gonna mess up the face <laughs> with the stripes. Oh gosh, but it's the same thing. Just take your time, take it nice and slow, and you guys will you guys will rock it. It 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 turned out fine. I was just panicking and making sure that I wasn't screwing up because I really didn't want to repaint the tiger because I liked the way that it was working out so far. And so I was just a, a panicky stress mess. I don't even think I was breathing half the time, to be honest. Make sure you guys are breathing. Okay, don't be like me. But after all the stripes and panicking and remembering to breathe, it is finished. <laughs> I swear my videos are getting longer and longer and I hope you guys like that. Let me know if you guys want them shorter or stuff. And let me know, like, what's your favorite portion of the video to watch? Like, do you like the sculpting? Do you like the airbrushing? Do you like, like, what part is your favorite to watch? Cause I'm never sure if like I'm cutting something too short because I think it's boring and you guys won't want to watch it, but maybe that happens to be your favorite part and you want more of it. So just let me know and I will uh, adjust accordingly. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, and until the next one, man, I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.